Today, Apple released the first beta of iOS 17.2, and there are some new things to check out, so let's get into this update. Okay, so opening up to iOS 17.2 uh, beta one, if we go into general here and then about, you can see that uh, we do have a new build number here, 21C5029G. Um, so yeah, this just gives you kind of a full preview of exactly what we're looking at for this specific update. The update for me was almost seven gigabytes, so it was quite a big update, but let's check out what's new here. And you can see that we have a new journal app. So you can see that the journal app has this uh, beautifully uh, kind of curated icon for, uh, you know, essentially journaling. It's kind of like a butterfly, um, but uh, two pages coming together looks really cool. But if we go into the app here, uh, you can see that I have nothing started, but this is now a place where you can journal. So I'll give you a little preview here. If we tap the plus button, you can see that they do have recommendations here uh, directly from Apple. Um, this looks like sort of a... Um, a beta feature here or a beta error, um, a lot of uh, different um, code there. But you can see that we have uh, two items here that are uh, looking good. So reflection, write about a song you love, record yourself singing for the few first lines if you like. It's just like little prompts like this that uh, kind of pop up here. You can refresh them into other things. Um, down below we have what's the best part of spending time at home. And then if I enter that reflection, I can just start writing. I can insert pictures, I can use my camera, I can use voice to text, I can uh, insert my location as well. Um, so what's the best part of spending time at home? Um, I can put Netflix and um, then I can go ahead and uh, add a different like prompts and you know add like a full journal for today's specific date. Um, but if I want to um, add to this, I can go back in and edit, but this is all set for like Thursday, uh, October 26. Now, if I want to do like a manual entry, I had a really, or let's just do this. I really love spending time at home today working on my computer, period. Okay, so obviously we can do audio entries, we can do text to speech, we can insert photos uh, via the uh, photo library or camera app. So a lot of cool things that you can do here specifically for the journaling app, and this is all free. You don't have to pay for any of this and it's all saved to the cloud. So, um, you know, it's very accessible, but also very private. Uh, and then also at the top here, you can see that I do have a prompt to lock my journal. So I can go ahead and set this up. I can require a passcode after a certain amount of time, and then I can obviously turn on face ID as well. So if you just have a passcode, it'll just use the passcode. If you have face ID, you can have face ID activate your journal. So I'm gonna do this after five minutes, turn on, and then now it's asking me for face ID. Can't really uh, access that right now, but uh, you get the you get the idea. So yeah, this is a cool new way to uh, kind of log your journal entries all electronically. Obviously, we're in beta here, so we're going to get some of these things here. But um, you know, having these recommended reflections and recommended prompts to uh, create new journal entries, and then obviously a place where we can journal freely is a great idea from Apple and something they've integrated with the journal app here. Now, if we go into settings, we have a new iMessage feature. Uh, if you go into the uh, Apple ID menu here, and then you go all the way down to contact key verification, you can turn this on. So contact key allows you to manually verify who you are messaging um, by comparing contact information with that person and what is registered. So you can go ahead and set this up now via that menu I just showed you. And if you go ahead and tap continue, um, I can update all of my devices to be essentially contact key verified um, so that essentially people will know that they're messaging me and not someone else um, when I'm using these devices. Okay, now another really cool new feature in the settings app is if you go to the action button menu, we now have a new action button option. It's called translate. And what's really cool is if you activate the action button translate feature, it essentially will allow you to start a live uh, transcription uh, via conversation of like uh, essentially language to language, English to French, French to English. Um, you can have a full conversation with with someone just by activating the translate button. So obviously right now it's listening for French and um, listening for English, and it's going to uh, essentially translate the two so that you can have a conversation with someone 
in another language that you don't speak or they don't speak your language. And what's really cool here is at the top, we have this beautiful animation um, where it's just kind of showing voices coming in and out. Um, right now, I don't think it's exactly working as designed, but this is something that Apple is going to push here in iOS 17.2. I can't wait. It's going to be a complete game changer to people quickly accessing the translate feature and quickly being able to have a conversation with someone just by activating that translate, um, that translate action button. Now, there's also a new collaboration feature for Apple Music subscribers. So just like Spotify, you can now collaborate on a certain playlist and add music to a set playlist via Apple Music with other subscribers to that platform. So guys, that's it. That's what is new in the first beta of iOS 17.2, but I'm sure there will be even more new stuff coming in the coming betas. So stay tuned for more news on new features and changes being brought to the iPhone via iOS 17.2.